Currently, over the last year and a half or so, actually malignant type of um, diseases or diagnoses are the most common. They can be actual cancer or often we're seeing um, things that are precancerous. It's, it's sort of fascinating that our diagnostic ability has really dramatically changed just in the last five or six years. And I can tell you about some research, it's getting better, but as a simple example, we now have the ability to look for specific genetic markers which indicate an enhanced risk of cancer. And that's just really in the last three or four years that we've started putting it into use. We use fancy techniques called fluorescent in situ hybridization. Um, but, but it's really very specific molecular and genetic techniques. And then we use that data to explain the risk to the patient and their family and uh, help them decide what treatment option, radical surgery versus continuing to monitor and follow the patient that's more appropriate at the time. It is hard, and um, it's one of the challenges I think we face in a number of areas in medicine as we develop these genetic tests, because although we might know that people have an abnormal gene and they're at increased risk, it's very hard to tell a person, especially a person of any specific age, exactly what their risk is. And so a lot of what we do is counseling the patient based on their age at the time, their overall health status, and what we think the risk is. Because there are many patients who really, the, the preferred treatment option is monitoring with additional scans or maybe some additional blood tests over time to see if there's any change. And so it, it takes um, quite a bit of time with some of the patients. Uh, often I spend 30 to 45 minutes uh, on an initial visit with a patient and their family to really try to give them the information they need, which of course is not typical for a surgery or clinic, right? Uh, usually they're much shorter visits. What we really focus on here um, at Tulane and other centers similar is this idea that some degree of regionalization of healthcare for for diagnoses and surgical treatments that aren't that common improves outcomes. And there's, there's two real reasons for that. One is, and if you just compare like my practice to somebody in a community hospital, even in New Orleans, I might do 20 or 30 major pancreas surgeries a year. A typical community hospital, all their surgeons added together might do two or three. So there's just a volume. And, and the thing is to remember though, it's not just the volume for the individual surgeon, but it's all the people who interface with the patient. Anesthesia, nursing, critical care. Um, these are complex surgeries and often they might require oh, interventional radiology procedures or like we were talking about these advanced gastroenterology procedures. So it's really a team and I think that it's one of the things that really intrigues me about how healthcare is evolving is we're going to a place which emphasizes the team as opposed to just the individual's performance. And that's really what makes the patient care better. In addition to that, the, the things we look at for markers of success are transitioning from what used to be the status quo. And I'll give you an example. Traditionally, a surgeon would look at, at just things that related to the surgery. For example, how long did the surgery take? How long was the length of stay in the hospital? Um, how many units of blood transfusion? And those are all important. No question about it. And we still monitor them. But now we're really looking at how does the patient do? Uh, and that's where we're looking at the outcome. So in two months from now is the patient who was not able to work because they were in chronic pain, are they back to working? Are they back to being um, active in their family, in their community? And we're really looking at outcome measures that transcend the individual doctor. It is a challenge and I expect that's going to be an increasing challenge with the way that um, healthcare payments, the Affordable Care Act and things are evolving. What we try to do to, to help 
patients um, with the ability to get the care at, at the best regional centers. Uh, really we look at two things. One is to network and educate community physicians on the services that we offer and when it's most appropriate to refer a patient to a specialist. And that includes our ability to take those patients in in a very reasonable time frame. So if we get a referral, our goal is to be able to see the patient within a week, at most two weeks, because at that point, the patient needs to be seen. They're, they've decided and they're treating doctors. So education and outreach is a big component. And the other thing that we've been really working on, sort of on the back end, is networking with home health agencies and even um, rehabilitation facilities so that when we do these pretty large surgeries on patients, we have the ability to transition the patient back to their community in a in a rapid uh, time frame so that when they're ready to be discharged from Tulane we can get them right back to their community where they're closer to their family and friends and that puts a lot less economic stress on the family and and by developing these relationships we make sure that our sort of our protocols and our our goals of care are shared between all the different caregivers